Hi guys, welcome back. Okay, today we're doing the skin and the final version of the skin. The other day, I talked about undertones and the differences that the undertones were going to make. Now, here's just a recap. On here, I have a red undertone. Here, I have the same color palette with a yellow undertone. The undertone on here is beige. The undertone on here is nectar. And you can see it makes a big difference in the color and what color is going to be the final version. We're working with the red undertones. So number five is getting put away and we will be working with this color palette. Now it's not going to be the final colors, but it's going to be the main colors that we're using. And then I'll add in what I need. We'll be working with nectar as the undertone, sienna brown, light umber, dark umber, black and for the red i'm going to be adding in black raspberry but i may change that to black cherry i'm not sure yet i'm going to see what it looks like at the very end there's always changes this is my game plan for now i have areas that i've left for highlights and i'm going to follow that because i actually can see it in my mind finished and that is where i want them i'm starting with my nectar and a nice sharp pencil and I'm putting a very light coat my hand is held back here as artists you should be holding your pencils further back I know it's very easy to want to go up here but really you will get much more control of the pencil if you get used to holding it back here and I'm gonna just put a light tone of the nectar unlike light skin I really want to leave this area that I'm highlighting very light like white and my undertone for my highlighted areas is actually going to be white so I'm leaving a lot of space open for that that's why it's important for you to do a color mapping or a have a sheet of what your colors are going to be, where they're going to be, so that when you come to here, there's no surprises. I'm basically transferring what I could see from my eyes onto my good paper. I want to finish this in one video, so I'm going to have a lot of this in hyperlapse or some of it in hyperlapse. I also recommend having an eraser because with dark skin, if you do a wayward lime you're going to make it look like a hair because it's dark it'll come out like we were doing fur have that eraser i have mine right here and if you wonder what eraser i use i use afmat i love this eraser i have no problem with it it comes with a lot of different ones i got it off of amazon and it's what i liked about it is it's rechargeable It'll always stay running for me. And I'm going to switch you on to Hyperlap to get this bottom layer on. Remember, very, very light. If you have trouble seeing it on my paper, I'm happy. <laughs> After you're happy with the nectar, you're going to go into your highlighted areas and add a layer of white. This way your paper stays even. Once you're finished, you're going to go 
to the edges of your white and your nectar and you're going to blend them up using the colorless blending pencil. I don't think it's really necessary to blend up just your nectar. Wait for that before you use your colorless blender on that because each time you use your colorless blender, you, you do tap your tooth down a little bit. So you don't want to lose too much of your tooth. So it's better that you wait until you get the next color on, which is going to be Sienna. Next, you're going to use your Sienna. And you're going to take the Sienna around the edges all the way into the highlight. And you're going to start maybe a few millimeters before the edge. So the very edge goes Sienna, Nectar, and blending very smoothly into the white. You're going to take this as dark as you would like it. And we're going to get ready to start using the umbers. You may have to add like two or three layers of the sienna to get the color to be really rich. If you're going too heavy, too dark, too fast, it's going to make a difference in your final project. So take it slowly, take it smooth. Now I'm moving on to my umbers and I'm going to start with the light one first. And now you can really see the dark skin coming in. Up until this point, I can go many different ways. Now it's going to turn into black skin. And if I stopped at the umber, you would have a light black skin. If I go towards the dark umber and black, you have black, black skin. And the same as before, you want to do it very lightly. Have a lot of patience. We're up to the colors that are going to make the skin really dark and you have a couple of choices here. We're going to be using black. I'm going to keep my light umber out so that I can use it to blend. And then we have two colors here. We have dark umber and we have sepia. Now sepia is a mixture of brown and black. That's how they get sepia. Now if you look on here, right there. I'm gonna swatch a little bit of dark umber here. And now I'm gonna swatch a little bit of sepia. And if you notice, they're virtually indistinguishable from each other. So if you pick up the sepia or you pick up the dark umber, one or the other, it's not that important. It's not something you're going to make a mistake with. I'm going to go with my dark umber only because I use the light umber and I want to keep my color ratios about the same um, and my mixing into the pencil. And here's where I'm going to start doing some of the contouring. With black skin, it's just like coloring any other black object. There's really very little black in black. The areas that I'm going to color are going to give the illusion that the object is black. Other than that, it's going to be light. I'm sorry for the lighting. I'm getting a lot of, um, I'm getting a lot of shadow. I don't know why. My lighting is mixed. If it becomes a problem, I'll change it. So I'm going to start in my deepest areas where I would have the dark. Keep your hand to the back. And I'm going to go over into the light, into the dark areas. Now this changes up the tone of the skin a lot. Her skin is very dark. 
even though I have a lot of light on the area. That's just what lighting would do to dark. But when you finish this, the illusion is going to be she has very dark skin. So I'm going to start in my darkest areas just so that I could set the tone for the picture. I'm working very lightly. And on my edges where the dark hits the lighter tones, I'm going to blend with my light umber. Now this is where you kind of have to eyeball and judge it as the artist to see where and what you're doing. Uh, there's no hard rule. Every picture is different. Every lighting is different. But the colors are going to be the same. So I'm going to just blend into the darker areas, the light umber, to get a smooth transition. And I'm going to do that everywhere. After that, I'm going to take my nectar again. So for now, I'm going to bounce back and forth. start using my blending pencil so that I don't get too far ahead of myself with layers and I'm also going to right now introduce black into the picture because there's areas that I need to judge the tone and how dark I want to take this I'm gonna use this black pencil very sparingly and very light so I can keep control of it See how her face is getting really dark? Now, I have a lot more to do on her. She's definitely not close to done. I have to do all of here. But now I have the option. I've brought in all my colors, and I have the opportunity now to start to contour the face. And when I contour the face, it's the same thing as I was doing with light skin. What I want to go in, I'm going to do darker. What I want out... I'm going to leave lighter, but at least now I have really strong options for my highlighted area. You're going to keep working the same process as you move in towards the highlighted areas. Remember, very light. At this point, you have a choice. You can actually add a light layer of gray to it. I'm using Nectar just to tone it down just slightly, but light gray does the same thing. And you're going to see it's going to become more like this than as stark as this. It's very important to keep using your blending pencils on your lighter layers. She's coming along nicely and 
you could see where leaving that air, those areas white really made a difference because look, I would never have gotten that as white and over here as white if I had not left those areas open. Remember, they used to be like this. So I still have work to do on here. I was able to get another layer on the hat. I'm not even on burnishing yet. See, I'm still have the ability to lay down color. And if you're curious, I've got about, I would say an average of about 15 layers on. And that's like some being 10 layers, some being uh, 15 layers, maybe up here probably has about 20 layers. It all depends. And in here, about 20 layers, but it's coming along. Some areas I have been able to burnish. It's gotten to that point where you could feel. Now, you know when you're burnishing, when your pencil is basically slipping over the wax and you're not going anywhere. So it's basically smearing wax from place to place. Uh, this is the area that I have to do the most work in. And all it is is keep the process going. I'm still working with the same colors. I have not added anything in. And that is Sienna Brown, Dark Umber, Light Umber, White, Black, and Nectar. And those are the only colors that I have added into the skin, except for the uh, Black Raspberry, where I added a little in the apple area of her face. So I'm going to finish up this little area in here, get my final details done, spray her up. Okay, I'm going to just put on some final details, sprayer, and uh, snap the picture, the final picture. You can take her skin darker. I'm stopping now because of time. Uh, I'd have to work on her another day. But it just by going over the light color, light, light layer, light layer, light layer, over and over again, your skin will become darker and darker, so it will become your choice on how dark you want to make her. Now, during my final touch-ups, which can take me hours, I'm not going to film it. I'm not doing anything different, just going in and adding in layers where I feel that it just needs a little bit more because the color is washed out. like over here. Believe it or not, I still have a lot of tooth. Um, if I wanted to push this to another level, um, I mean, watch, if I want to take this to a darker level now, look how, even after all these layers, because I went so light with my pencil, that I didn't damage any of the tooth. And it's just taken, taking wax and taking wax. And now if I varnished it, which here back here I'll do, I go a little heavier 
it's taking an entire varnish layer back here. Which means I did not at all give up the tooth. This was fun. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. It's just the process. Go through your pencils the way I did. Build those layers up the way I did and your pictures will look like this. I just sprayed her. I'm going to just wait for her to dry a little bit. The paper gets a little bit opaque right after I spray her when it's wet. And it'll whiten up and, and dry. I love the way she came out. And I will see you guys in my next video. Take care. Stay home. And stay safe. Love you.